ัมมูตัสสะภะคะวะตุวะรหัตุสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะมูตัสสะภะคะวะตุวะรหัตุสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนะมูตัสสะภะคะวะตุวะรหัตุสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะ Just now, they gave invitation. It's very interesting when you watch the Buddhist rituals. It's actually the enactment, enactment of the past. What happened in the past? It was reenacted just now. She is inviting me to give Dharma talk, just like when the Buddha was enlightened. And he was not quite sure whether he should preach or not because the discovery, spiritual discovery, was so sublime. Whether the people would benefit from his teaching, so he was considering whether he should just simply pass away. And then Brahma came. Brahma read the mind of the Buddha, and he was afraid that should the Buddha just decide to pass away, then the people will not benefit from the teaching of the Buddha. So Brahma came to pay respect to the Buddha and invited the Buddha to preach. He compared the people. It is true that some people will not benefit from the teaching of the Buddha, but there will be yet another group of people, comparing to the four groups of uh, lotuses. You know, the one down below will be eventually eaten by turtle and by fish, but there are some lotus which is already above the water and just simply waiting for the warmth of the sunlight. And those lotus will benefit from the teaching of the Buddha, just like the lotus benefiting from the ray of the sun. I am now inviting you to please preach. So she is inviting me. The same way that Brahma was inviting the Buddha, isn't that interesting? So when you actually understand the meaning of Buddhist rituals as we perform, it is always reenactment of the past. Now, when the Buddha established Buddhism, he established also the fourfold Buddhist assemblies. That is the Pikku, Pikkunis, Upasaka, and Upasika. Upasaka means laymen, and Upasika means laywomen. He did not establish them for fun. He established them with responsibilities. He expected them to be number one to study his teaching, number two to put his teaching into practice. Number three, should there be any outsider saying something against Buddhism, they should be able to defend. And number four, they should also propagate Buddhism. Now, people become interested. People, particularly the non-Buddhist, become interested in Buddhism in Buddhism in two major ways. One group study, read Buddhist books. And get quite interested, but when they have studied enough, they will realize that reading is not sufficient. They also have to put into practice, so they come into meditation. Okay, another group started jump into meditation technique, particularly insight meditation. After some time, he or she realizes that this practice needs. Checking with the text, so they started reading. Only when you have both reading from the text as well as putting into practice, then you have a proper understanding of Buddhism. And when you have proper understanding of Buddhism, then you will be able to defend. Then you will be able to propagate. The duty to propagate and to defend will not happen if you have not studied. Some people are just simply happy to be practicing, and they say this is enough for their life. Just simply to practice. If they realize their responsibilities, then it is not enough to practice. If you practice very well, you're a very good person. You keep five precepts very well, all intact, but you will not be able to defend. You will not be able to propagate. Then Buddhism dies with your death. Understand? This is very important. That very few Buddhists understand. Very few Buddhists realize their responsibilities. That they have to do both the practice as well as to study. Only when they study, they understand. 
put the, put the teaching into practice, then they realize and they can now confirm that this particular teaching is very true because I have experienced it in myself. I have been able to reduce my anger because I follow this text and I put it into practice. That's why I can reduce my anger, I can reduce my greed, and I can reduce my uh, clinging to things outside themselves. Buddhism professes that you can overcome suffering that is caused by clinging on to self which is not real from the very beginning. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? You cling on to shadow. And because you cling on to shadow, no wonder we suffer. Because you cannot make reality out of a shadow. So this is very important that you have to understand the importance of the combination between textual reading and practice. Put both into action and then you will realize, you will appreciate that Buddhism is not about textual study only. Buddhism is not about practicing sitting there very quietly just like, just like a solid doll for hours and you're, you're happy with it. No. That's why now, in October, the Vatican is organizing the first time a conference between the Buddhist nuns and Christian nuns to meet. Each one of them, and on each side, they come from 25 countries. And they will be discussing about contemplative action and active contemplation. Is that interesting? Contempla contemplative action and active contemplation. This is going to happen in October this year. And for Guangshan, which is Mahayana temple, will be the venue will be hosting in Taiwan, but the organizing, the organizing members come from, from the Vatican and from the Buddhist. So uh, you can see the balance between Christianity and Buddhism that will be happening soon in Taiwan. Why Fo Guangshan? Very interesting. Fo Guangshan is the, I have to say, the temple, the monastery in Buddhism that really paid great interest to revive the Pikuni Sangha in Theravada. In Mahayana Buddhism, they already have Pikunis, they have no problem. It continued from Sri Lanka since the year 433 AD. The lineage, the Pikuni lineage from Sri Lanka went to China that early and continued on. So on the Chinese side, they don't have problem about revival because they have never lost. We have to talk about revival of the Pikuni issues because we have lost it. We have lost it in Theravada tradition and Fo Guangshan was the monastery in Mahayana Buddhism which tried very hard to help the revival of the Pikunis in Theravada. So it is very appropriate that Fo Guangshan is actually the venue for this a large group of the Buddhist nuns and Christian nuns to meet and to discuss about how they can be beneficial for themselves and also beneficial for others. Contemplative action talks about action which has already been contemplated. They talk about action which comes from contemplation. So both sides will be giving input giving input to each other and discussing each other. For the first time, the Vatican is interested about women, expressively in organizing the conference on women. This particular pope, this present one, the present pope, has a great opening in his heart to raise the women, both in Christianity and also in Buddhism. That's why they create this venue for, for us to meet. So as you are coming here, you will start to understand about how the Buddha meant us Buddhists to do, what are the responsibilities that we have to continue. And also now we deal with con uh, contemporary issues the most immediate contemporary issues in Thailand is the revival of the Pikuni Sangha 
And now I just had a, I just had a, a short meeting with my secretary coming in from India. He went to Laos. He went to Long Prabang to help uh, renovate very old very old temple. And now he's flying back to to India. But he stopped over to have a meeting with me. He is now proposing that the next ABC Asian Buddhism connection the organ the the conference that we are organizing. This year it will be in Indonesia. Next time it will be in Nepal. That is the year 2000. 2020 will be in Nepal. And they, we will focus on leadership. He said, he proposed that we have uh, in Asia, we lack leadership among the Buddhists among the Buddhists. So this will be the proposed topic for the upcoming ABC in Nepal. So just report to you the latest of the, of the activities that we are doing. And I think by sharing the ideas, you can pick up. You can pick up some thoughts from your own context so that we can spring up with activities it's just like you're talking about mushroom in the rainy season, how mushroom spring up in rainy season, like that. So this sharing of ideas, I hope that uh, eventually will bring all of us to that kind of uh, activities that we can be doing for ourselves and always doing for others. The first time when the Buddha sent out 60 enlightened bhikkhus, to spread the words, to spread the teaching of, of the Buddha. He instructed them that go, not in the same route, but go separate route. So 60 monks will go in diff 60 different directions to teach, to teach about the discovery of the Buddha. He said, be beneficial to yourself and be beneficial to others. This is very important. I take it as a very cru crucial instruction that we living in this society cannot simply be satisfied with your own happiness in your own temple. We have to reach out for others. I cannot be happy living in an unhappy society. Monastics cannot be happy in your own temple only when you live among the suffering beings around the temple. So this idea is very clear. The instruction that the Buddha gave is very clear that we always think about our benefit. At the same time, always concern and consider the happiness of others. Thus, bring about this contemplative action. Contemplative action. So I hope that uh, sharing some ideas, I hope that you will have some understanding about about Buddhism and some understanding about attitude of the Buddhist to the world outside, outside us. And hope that in the future, allow our temple to be the ground that activities, positive activities can happen. We can join together, cutting across religions, we can join together and come up with beneficial activities together. Thank you.